Hello everyone, it's the Better Half Relationship Podcast. My name is Godman Akinladi and I have my wife with me, Bola Akinladi, and uh, uh, it's so great to have Bola with me on, on this series. We are on a series, a three-part series of the ABC of a successful marriage. And we started out discussing on authenticity, uh, the vulnerability, and just, you know, bringing your A-game on into your marriage, bringing your authentic self into your marriage. Uh, and into your relationships. And as we progress uh, in this the second part of the series, we want to look at the B, A, B, B, well, we're just making this up, right? <laughs> B being your belief system, your belief system. So, Bola, uh, your belief system, how does it really affect successful marriage? Successful relationships, yeah. all right. Um, so just dealing again with um, the issues that are critical, you know, for any successful relationship, um, be it a, um, a marriage, be it a business partnership, you know, um, whatever it may be. When we say belief system, we're not, we're not essentially talking about your faith or religion, right? Um, we're not essentially saying that, um, um, you know, as important as faith and, and, you know, having some commonality in that space, as, as important as that can be, that isn't the only element to this conversation on the belief system. So we're talking about values? So when we talk about belief systems, we're talking about a really big um, compendium of things that include your mindset, things that include um, your vision for the future, things that include your values, you know, your values, and the things that are core, the reason why you make decisions. The reason why you make choices and the reasons, the, the things that influence your motivation, your motivation for life, your yeah. motivation, your expectation. These are all the things that add up to your, form, belief, system. your belief system, your mindset, your idiosyncrasies, you know, uh, and we're talking about alignment of belief system that without an alignment of belief system, a relationship cannot go far Yeah, because there's a tension. Um, uh, that can be overbearing, which is the tension of uh, the pool when we're pulling in different, different directions. Direction. Yeah, there's a healthy tension that should exist within any relationship, uh, which is the tension to pull us together. You know, uh, you know whether you're pushing or pulling, it's a bit of force. And in a relationship, it's either we're, we're growing together or we're going apart. Mm -hmm. And when our belief system is you know, miles apart, then it's difficult for us to grow together. Everybody will grow. Everybody, Everybody will grow. If you grow. invest in your growth, you will grow. Mm -hmm. The only issue is, are we growing together or are we growing apart? Yeah. And a major uh, function in whether we grow apart or grow together is then our, belief our belief system. system. Yeah. Two can only work together. Unless they agree. agree. And they have some measure of alignment. Mm -hmm. right. Can you share some experiences in this area? Okay. Uh, uh, what, what, Interestingly, yeah. rather than an experience, what I was thinking about when you were talking just now is um, the fact that um, you find that on this subject of um, belief system, values, and I mean, sometimes two people can have very similar backgrounds, very, very similar backgrounds. We can come from the same um, tribe. We can come from, you know, a similar background in terms of socioeconomics, but then we come together in a relationship, we come together in a marriage, and suddenly the points of disagreement just show up out of nowhere. And we're wondering, but I thought, I thought this person understood what I mean when I say, you know, and that's where you begin to realize that your language doesn't exactly align in every area. And you realize that when I say it's time to give our family you know, a good standard of living, for example. What may be going on in my mind and the picture I'm painting in my mind may completely differ from yours, right? And what largely, you know, influences those pictures that we paint in our mind is our belief systems. Yeah. You know, imagine two people married. One of them came from a really indigent background and swore, you know, I will never waste, in my house we will never waste, we'll never allow for waste. And because of that, they cannot, they cannot even, you know, tolerate anything that they consider to be excessive spending. Now, 
your spouse may be, on the other hand, the kind of person who thinks, you know what, you only live once, YOLO, you know, right? So let's enjoy this money now that we are young and alive and able to enjoy it. So you have this person, I mean, in local parlance, we say someone who doesn't like lao lao spending. Forgive me if you don't speak um, <laughs> local, you know. You have this person who cannot tolerate anything that they consider to be excessive spending. And you have this other person who just wants to enjoy life while they're young. And suddenly, those things that they had thought they had agreed on earlier, which is we're very reasonable people, we're not excessive. Suddenly, the definition of what really does you know, extreme and excessive mean begins to pull them in different directions. So this question of belief system, it's really big. Yeah. It's really, really big. Yeah. And so many it, factors feed in. It gets into where we live. You know, in these days of great resignation and migration, uh, there's conflict. Some people say, I want to stay in my country, in my own country. Some people say, I want to explore the world. Yeah. And uh, when we got married, never, you know, it was never on the table that I was going to live anywhere else. So if you want to go, go your own way. You know, uh, you know, in handling and parenting our children, uh, my belief system about the kind of relationship I want to have with my child, which school they should go, may conflict with your own. And at that point, it puts this unhealthy tension on our relationship. But you know, if only we will always remember that we're on the same team. Yeah. Such that, you know, at the end of the day, what what the, 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 what what are we here to achieve? Mm -hmm. We're here to win mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. We're here to achieve our goals in life together. Mm -hmm. uh, though we understand uh, that the, the the tension of how to align our belief system will always be there. But in the area where I feel you have some measure of strength, or this thing that you believe has worked for you for, and is delivering results, mm -hmm. like you're talking about spending now the money language oh. of each person. If my money language works for me and yours does not seem to be even result, I think it's okay for you to pander, uh, you know, to my money language so that we speak the same money language, we are lying. So when we explore each other's area of strength, sometimes it helps us to deal with conflicting uh, belief system. Interestingly, when you just said, um, you know, how if your, um, if your belief system or your tendencies in one area are not working, perhaps you want to um, move on to mine. I was just gonna jump in right there and say, well, maybe sameness is not really what we're advocating um, exactly, but alignment is critical. Yeah. So I'm not saying that the frugal spender must only marry a frugal spender. If, if for nothing, please pity your children. If you're a frugal spender, find someone who has a healthy relationship with spending right not the person who never saves but who understands that look you need to balance these things so that your children will not abuse you in the future and say what's the use of the money in your account when we did not have the chance to you know enjoy some of the benefits aha uh -huh. yeah. so i don't really advocate sameness because our differences are just meant to bring to bring a blessing and wholeness into our relationship but i absolutely agree with you that alignment is what is critical so the truth is that your language evidences your belief system. Absolutely. Yeah. So whether it's love language, language of apology, or, or uh, money language, you know, in relationship coaching, we have all those kind of different languages yeah. that would try to know what language are you speaking? What is your love language? So if your love language is gift or act of service, we know your belief system is that until somebody has served, they don't really love you. Yeah, or somebody are giving you a gift, they don't really love you. Yeah, yeah. I, but you're marrying somebody who doesn't care about gifts, they just want a qu quality time. Yeah. Yeah, so you need to understand uh, each other's belief system. Absolutely. Uh, for you to be able to gain some level of alignment. Understanding is very key. Critical. Yeah, very critical. And in certain areas of belief system, you get to a critical juncture before these things play out. That's why people can be married for 20 years. And at the end of the day, they see so far Now I remember an example. Yeah. Forgive me, you know, an example on this whole belief system. You know, when we got married, um, so I, I grew up in a very um, 
close knit. Close knit family. Uh, nuclear family. Mo nuclear family, right? Uh, my father just had the one wife Nuclear and four children. Yeah. Uh, my husband came from a polygamous background. He was number 20 something out of the children in the house. You know, so we used to have so much tension at the beginning because, you know, I just felt like my husband, you know, wasn't exactly um, doing this husband thing the way my father used to do it. And how did my father used to do it? When we all came in to the house in the evening, he would go check all the doors, make sure all the doors were locked. In fact, he would even come into your room, make sure you don't have the fan on too high because it's like, oh no, I don't want you to get sick. So I grew up with that picture, father, who is the gate man of the home, who makes sure the doors are but locked, the windows are checked. Was also a he was also a military man, so that even added fuel Starting to the train. fire. And then I come to marry this guy, who doesn't even remember if the door is locked or not. Who is coming in my house if you dare lock the door? Number 20, number 15 in the children. The outside. <laughs> may still be outside, and you dare not my lock him out. After you, you my son out. So the doors are always open. So you can imagine, we were not the life. same at all. Was that a reason why the marriage should fail? Absolutely not. We had to come to a place of alignment. We had to come to the place where we realized that the person who likes this door locked, should please go and check this door. He has tried to adjust through the years. I'll give him kudos for that. But have we achieved sameness? Absolutely not. No, no. Alignment, we're working. So, we're working. Uh, we're working the main there. point that we're making in this uh, uh, episode of this series on ABC of successful uh, marriage or relationship is that your belief system, like your belief system, uh, uh, we're talking about your expectations, your motivation, your aspiration, uh, you know, your value, and then your faith sometimes also weighs very strong. Faith uh, is critical. Very critical, yeah. Yeah, but it's part of the belief system. It's part of the belief system because if somebody embraces a particular religion and that embraces another one, there may be an unhealthy tension that will ensue. But we have seen people who married across religion and- And they made it work. They're making it work. So the, the difference should not tear apart your marriage, but we must find a point of alignment even as we seek to understand our individual steps. We hope this has uh, been enlightening and refreshing to you, but we're going to uh, finish up with C. You know, we have a piece of successful marriage uh, in the next episode. Thank you for joining us and your marriage and relationship is... Amen. <laughs>